All right, guys, we're going to start looking at the real numbers. But before we actually look at real numbers, let's get a good idea of what the definitions of real numbers are. Um, I'm going to change the screen color here, and then we'll get started. Changing the screen to black. Oh, I'll change my pen to yellow. It's a good color. And I'll also select, um, I want to make a shape here. Before we write the shape, let's just say, hey, I'm working with the real numbers. The real numbers. All right. So from here, I ask myself, hey, what are real numbers? Well, well, remember back in the day, you probably started watching Sesame Street. You learned to count numbers such as one, two, and three, and four, and so on. And that continued on probably to about number 10. But you learned to count numbers one through 10. And you were so proud, you told your mom and dad, and they were excited. But it stopped, because number 10 was all that you knew. And then, well, up to 10 is all that you knew. But then from there, you know, you grew up again. You started watching Barney. You became a little bit more sophisticated. And you said, wait a second. There are a couple more facts that I know, and one of the facts is the real numbers, are the, and we call these numbers the counting numbers. Why the counting numbers? Because basically, you're learning to count. They are our first set of numbers we learn to count. Counting numbers are also known as the natural numbers. But then, you do become a little bit more sophisticated. Mom and Dad realize, like, hey, this kid knows more. They're watching Barney. They're not watching that Sesame Street stuff anymore. And... From there, you learn to count numbers such as uh, like that. Let's clone. You're working with the real numbers, and as a kid, you start learning how to count numbers such as one, two. Three, four, and after that you probably learn a couple more. And you probably even stop at the number 10. Well, what we do is we call these numbers the counting numbers. Why the counting numbers? Well, basically you're learning to count, and they aren't that sophisticated. You'll come to realize that in a second. The counting numbers are also known as our natural numbers. So natural or counting numbers, they are both the same thing. But after some time, you become a little more sophisticated. You start watching shows like Barney. I'm going to box this up for a second. And you say, wait a second. There's more to life than just the counting numbers. In fact, you probably learn a couple extra facts. And one of those in Barney, you learn that the number system does not count start at number one. And you start learning that the big, the big one here is you learn there's this number called zero. And you say, wait a second, I could have zero of something? Well, sure, you have a plate of ice cream, you eat it all up, there's no ice cream left, therefore you have zero amount of ice cream, and so forth. But you learn to count zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. And after a certain point, you probably even get to 20 because you become so much more sophisticated. And from that point, you say, okay, I know all the numbers. And what we do is, we call this number system the whole number system because it includes the number zero. That's the big one, the whole numbers. But again, that's not all there is to life. And you grow a little bit older, become a little more sophisticated, and you begin to say there is more than just having a whole set of numbers. In fact, you've probably grown up in Texas your whole life. Maybe some of you have done some travels, but maybe you have some family or friends up in a colder region and you spend all this money to go travel there, and now you have no money left, and you realize you only have your warm Texas summer clothes. And then you realize, well, wait a second, I need to go buy some clothes, but I don't have any money because I spent it all on this travel stuff. And so, therefore, all of your money that you don't have, so you have zero money, you gotta borrow from somebody. You gotta borrow, and you realize, hey, I've got, I had no money, but now I have even less money. I have negative money, and I owe somebody money. Or another idea is because you are in a colder region, maybe that temperature 
has dropped below zero degrees. So you start to realize there are not only positive numbers, but negative numbers. And negative numbers are just like positive numbers. The only difference is, is they reflect the positive numbers in an opposite direction of zero. So negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. So when you begin to realize there are negative numbers within your counting system, we call these integers. But again, you're probably in school by this point, and it's probably right around the oops, third to fourth grade, you start to realize, well, there's a lot of us around, and everything can't be equal as to getting whole pieces of oh, items such as food or snacks or treats or rewards. And you realize that instead of getting a whole bag of candy or a whole pizza, you're just giving, giving up a part of it, a piece of it. And we start getting into something known as fractions. And fractions are, they are our integers that create, they are integers that create ratios. So an integer is placed in the numerator and an integer is placed in the denominator. As long as it's a non zero number, you don't want a zero in the denominator, it becomes a new set of numbers. So here I have zero, and well, we got our negative numbers too. So these are going off in one direction. But then I realize that, hey, out of four pieces, out of, out of a brownie or, or something, we cut it up into half or, or uh, four pieces. So out of one whole brownie or one whole piece of pea or Oh, I don't know. So you, you get a half or a, a quarter of, or with a, a piece of pizza, which would have six slices, you only get one. So therefore, you're only getting parts of a whole. And these fractions that we have, as long as there's no zero in the denominator, we end up calling these our rational numbers. So here's our rational number system. Rational. And then then from here, this whole set, because the the uh, whole numbers not only include zero, it adds the counting numbers or natural numbers. And building from there, the integers not only include whole numbers, but they include negative numbers. And building from there, rational numbers not only include zero and all the integers that are negative, but it also includes the whole numbers. Well, let's do that in reverse. So our rational numbers not only include our counting or natural numbers, one, two, three, and four, and so on, they also include the whole numbers because of zero, and then they also include integers because negative numbers are included. So therefore, um, this whole set, what you end up do is you end up calling them the real number system. Let's box this guy up here. All right, and then we're going to write out the last set here, the real number system with pencil here. So these make up our real numbers. However, there is another piece to the puzzle. Since these are all of our real numbers, let's box those in a nice new color. We're going to say, hey, all of our real numbers are a part of this set of orange. We'll use orange for our color. Um, it's not all of the truth. So there's something more, something that has not been stated yet. And disconnected from, so disconnected from the real numbers are also, or disconnected from our rational numbers, are a set of numbers that they don't really work out the same as our rational numbers, so we're going to call them irrational. I will grab a pencil here. We call them irrational for certain reasons. They can be similar to a real number, or they can be similar. Oop, wrong pen color. Let me go back to green. So here's our irrational system. I think that's still in blue. Yep. 
So you've got irrational numbers. But what are irrational numbers? And why are they irrational numbers? Well, a couple of examples would be pi. No, not the food. So you got pi and p and the square root of 3 or the square root of 10. So are square roots irrational? Mm, not exactly. But there are certain square roots that actually do not come out to be um, perfect squares. And what ends up happening is with all of these, you end up with non-repeating or non, this color is not coming out too well. Let's get a bright color here. end up with non-repeating or non-terminating decimals. So hey, non-repeating or non-terminating decimals are all irrational numbers. We'll give this a good box. We're going to turn this box into blue. And the irrational numbers are disconnected from the rational number system. So remember, all of our rational numbers include the sets of counting numbers, whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. However, there's this extra set, and this extra set, yep, yeah, that didn't come out. This extra, this alternate set does not include any of those other sets. So it's disconnected in the sense that it's not a rational number. The decimals are non-terminating, non-repeating. However, some further insight to rational numbers, that must mean that rational numbers, when we have deal with decimals with fractions, create decimals sometimes, those decimals have got to either repeat, and again, that doesn't show up that well, so we'll get a color that does, these decimals repeat or they terminate. All right, so if they repeat or terminate, they are rational. But if they do not repeat or they don't terminate, hey, guess what? They're irrational. So now for our last piece of information. Both sets of rational, because remember, rational includes all other sets before it. So both sets of rational and irrational numbers create a new set of numbers called our real number system. And let's even get purple. We'll get our last color. And let's get purple and we'll box this last set because all of these are a part of the real number system. The very top here. Now I'll box the whole thing. So all of these make up our real number system.